Okay, let's go back to another constituency, and I know this is, uh, this is a potential uh, point on which we disagree, but I, when I look at what the power companies are doing, I see ambivalence, I see confusion. I, I happen to be in an airport bar at SFO, San Francisco, um, about a year ago, and I'm sitting next to this guy from, and I, of course, I immediately introduce myself to whomever, you know, within yeah. earshot of me. Um, he's an executive at the power company in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. And I go, tell me what you're doing in terms of planning for this electrical, electric vehicle craze. You know, mm -hmm. you, you must be champing at the bit to get rid of that off-peak power um, that you could, if you could sell it at, you know, a couple cents a kilowatt hour, you'd, it'd be wonderful. Yeah. And he goes, you know, to be honest with you, we haven't, we haven't even started looking at that. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, how is that possible? So it seems to me, I don't know whether it's because they're overregulated or they're just naturally bureaucratic, or there's some force, there's some factor here I'm not seeing, but it seems to me the power companies don't have the, the uh, initiative to pick up this uh, subject as you would think they would. Well, uh, actually, it's, it's, a, it's a mixed bag because some of the utilities are all over this. Uh, Southern California Edison, which serves my, my community in Santa Monica, is probably the leader uh, amongst all the utilities in the country. They have over 100 people working on transitioning to the electric car. So uh, the infrastructure, the charging infrastructure, a lot of them are looking at that. You know, they want to know where these cars are bought because you know, an electric car is going to you know, draw about six kilowatts of energy. Uh, so you need a 240 volt circuit, 30 amps, and that's going to be continuous. So uh, that's about as much as a regular normal house will use, but you'll pretty much be charging all at night. And they'll, they'll do that by uh, structuring the rates so that if you charge at night, you pay 10 cents a kilowatt hour, you charge in the day, it'll be 30 cents. Mm -hmm. Your choice, you can charge whenever you want, but it's just gonna be one third the cost at night. So most people will definitely go for the nighttime charging. Uh, but the utilities have to know where these cars are being bought because they need to upgrade the transformers in the neighborhoods. Each transformer serves about four or five houses. If uh, three of those houses have EVs, they need to split that off and, and have a second transformer or an upgraded transformer. Uh, but the utilities are definitely looking into that. I can't speak for the person you talked to at PG&E up in the Pacific Northwest, but uh, those people, the ones I'm following, are definitely all over it. From Vancouver down to uh, uh, San Diego, all the utilities are aware of it, and they're starting to get their arms around it. SCE, Southern California Edison, is one of the leaders, but others are, are definitely leading as well. Department of Water and Power in Los Angeles, which is the nation's largest municipal utility, is woefully behind. They have one person working on this, and he doesn't really know that much. So uh, <laughs> there, there is a, a wide variety, but the smart ones are all over it, yeah. Mm -hmm.